most gracious Heavenly Father. We come before your throne this day asking that you would send your Holy Spirit down upon each and every one of us who is here this morning. Touch us, O Lord. Help us to understand your word and be able to apply it to our lives as we live it today. Bless then, O Lord, the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. May they be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, Amen. There's something that's the same in any individual's life. There are times in our lives when we just think of ourselves. I'd like for you just to think of a time when you looked at a picture of you and some other individuals. Where did your eyes go first? They went probably to you. To see how you looked in that particular picture. For most of us, you see, we're concerned about what other people think about us. We are concerned of ourselves. We want friends, but at times we don't want to spend the time that it takes for you and me to develop friendships. We want real joy within our lives, but we find at times because of our circumstances in our lives, we don't get that joy. We search for all sorts of things, and others in our world search for all sorts of things to bring us joy. And yet, what happens to all of us, if that's our goal, we don't find any joy in the things that are around us. That's why it's important for us to be studying God's Word, to be looking to see, okay, what is God showing to us about joy? God's love shining through us as we live our lives today and as we share His love with those that are around us. God's love. Like for those of you who, well, all of you, take a look at your second finger here, the ring finger. Some of you are married, some of you aren't. But this is known as the ring finger. Why is it known as the ring finger? Because most of us wear a ring. And it's an indication of a commitment that we have to someone else. In this case, this ring on my finger reminds me of my commitment to my wife. And that I have fellowship with her. In our text for today, Jesus, you see, talks about fellowship with him and fellowship with those that are around us. And what I'd like for you to think as you look at your green finger is to think of fellowship, is to think of your commitment to Christ, and think of your commitment to those who are around you. Too often we as Christians are known not for joy, but for sadness. Think about people's faces, and this is difficult now in this pandemic because you can't see an individual's face. You can't see whether a person's smiling, frowning, or having no expression whatsoever because of the mask is there. But think about when the mask is off. 
What do most of us as Christians look like to those who are not Christian? Do we demonstrate joy or do we demonstrate anger, sadness, anything but what our God wants for us? Many people today were included in that. Look at our circumstances, our defeats, our struggles, and all the things that are around us. And let that taint the way we feel. Now I want to read from 1 John <laughs> chapter 1, a few of the verses. This is chapter 1 and 2 of 1 John. And there is so much that's in there that we can't talk about all of the stuff that's in verses, chapters 1 and 2. But I just want to talk about verses 3 through 7 of chapter 1. Jesus here is the word of life that comes to us. And we read here in verse 3, the following. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father, with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in Him is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with Him, but walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. As we look around in our world, there is much darkness. We look at the standards, the moral standards that seem to be lowering. We look at crime rates. You may have experienced an illness of some kind. Many people we're hearing have lost their jobs because of this pandemic. There's much stress, we're told. Individuals today are having all sorts of trauma in their lives. Anything but joy, darkness. And what we're finding in these scriptures is that that's not the way our God wants us to be in this world and in our lives. He wants us to be above whatever our circumstances might be. He wants us to experience genuine joy amid trials and difficulties. And so today, I ask as you look at verse 4, it says in verse 4, to make our joy complete. How can we make our joy complete? How can we have that joy that is perfect in our lives? each and every day. And what I'd like for you to think of are two things. Fellowship with God and fellowship with one another. We look at our text. It begins with fellowship with God. We look at verse 3 again, it says, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We all must have to start with God and what he has done for us. Last weekend, we celebrated Easter. The Friday before, we celebrated Good Friday. Two of the most important events in our lives and in the life of our world and because of that, you and I have fellowship with God. We have forgiveness. You see, you and I were separated from God because of the 
the sin that's within our lives and within our world. And by Jesus' death on the cross, he brings us once again back together in a relationship with God by the forgiveness of our sins. And you see, if you don't really believe in the forgiveness of your sins, you can't have any real joy. That's what we need first, is to believe that our God has given us us forgiveness and love, and wants us to be in a relationship with God. That we can rise above our worry, rise above our illness, rise above our circumstances. But you know the only way to do that is to be involved in the Word. It's to study God's Word. If you're not in the Word, if you're not reading it, if you're not studying it, you're missing out on the biggest gift, or one of the biggest gifts that our God gives to us, to help us. In that fellowship with him. Here's a picture of some uh, sponges. When you look at those sponges, they all look the same. But I'd like for you to think of what's in your home. There's five sponges that are on the counter. They all look the same. They've all been used but they look the same. So now, you go up to one, you pick it up, and you squeeze it, and out comes some Coke or Pepsi. You know that that particular sponge was used for probably wiping something that had spilled on the counter. You pick up another one of those sponges, looks the same. But you squeeze it, and out comes tub and tile paper. You know, that sponge was used in the bathroom to clean there. You pick up another sponge and you squeeze it, and out comes motor oil. You know, that was used in the garage. You pick up another one and you squeeze it, and out comes powder, baby powder. You know, that was used in the baby's bedroom. You pick up another one, you squeeze it, and out comes floor wax. All looked the same on the outside, but when they were squeezed, you found out really what was inside. Your life and mine are like that sponge. You look around and you see and with all in effect, we look the same. But when we're squeezed, in other words, when problems come in our life, when struggles are there, what's in us will come out of us. And that's why there is such a need for us to be in a relationship with our God. When we're squeezed, tears will come. When we're squeezed, anger may come. When we're squeezed, remorse may come. But what our God is, is when we're squeezed, when we have confidence to let His love come. Let people know He's with us no matter what. So the first thing to have complete joy is that fellowship with God. And then the second thing. Fellowship with one another. All of us know that if you harbor grudges, if you have bitterness towards somebody else, it will affect the way you act and the way you are. If we put in negative things into our lives, negative things will come out. You and I, you see, we have something to share. And what he's done for us. And that needs to come out in our fellowship with one another. There's an individual, his name is Don Barkett. He's a handicapped Indian. 
When he was younger, his father rejected him. His parents rejected him. The church rejected him. Nobody wanted to have anything to do with him. Life for him was hopeless and helpless. And then as he tells this story, and he uses this phrase, white woman, a white woman came into his life. She showed to him love. She showed to him care. She showed to him that he was worth something. And as he grew older, he began to learn. Christ came into his life. And today, he is sharing many things with people about Jesus. And it all is there because one person, a white woman, took time to love him, care for him, and show to him that he was worth a while. Fellowship with one another. We need to see how important our relationships really are. Each of us can make a difference. Some years ago, I experienced this at a man. We had a, a donor man, maybe some of you have heard of him. He came to our place and in our worship area and he did all sorts of things. And there were grandparents, there were kids, there were adults that were there, they're jumping together, laughing together, tickling each other, and just having a very great time. Fellowship was taking place. But that's not but really got me most. What got me most was afterwards. But we needed to clean up. Everybody, no matter who they were, old or young, helped. Everybody. And the place was cleaned up, put together in a short amount of time. The joy of fellowship and working together. So today, relationships. How can complete joy be there? Fellowship with God. Realizing His forgiveness. And then living that out in relationships with other people. As you go through your week, look at your ring finger. Realize what it means. Commitment. Fellowship, sharing with the Lord in Christ and with one another. Amen. Now I invite you to join me in saying together the apostles of the Nicene Creed as it appears by our screen. I believe in.